So recently, some serious allegations were levied against Spindle Horse, the studio behind Hasbun Hotel and Hell of a Boss. In this video, I'll give context to the situation, go through each allegation, and then give my thoughts after. Once again, for those unaware, Ailemau is still on vacation, so I'll be filling in for him. I have some videos on this show as well, so if you'd like to check them out, I'll have my channel linked below. There have been a lot of controversy slash drama videos lately, but I think it's important that we discuss these kind of serious topics and keep everyone up to date. And lastly, before I start, I'd like to remind everyone that Spindle Horse, Bento Box, and Vivzy Pop are innocent before proving guilty. These are just allegations, so make your own mind up after watching. On July 15th, an animation review document was posted on Twitter. This tweet ended up getting over 7,000 likes and 500,000 views at the time of recording. In this document, users can anonymously review animation studios they worked for in the past. They select options based on a drop-down menu and can leave a comment with additional info and clarification. This document has over 290 responses. The studios we're most interested in are Bento Box and Spindle Horse, with Bento Box being largely behind the work on Hasbin, while Spindle is Vivzipop's studio which worked on Hasbin and Hell of a Boss. In this video, I've picked three reviews, one for Bento Box and two for Spindle Horse. I'll read them out and then give my thoughts after. I'd also like to mention that you don't need proof or sources to apply to review in this document, so there is a chance that any amount of these reviews could be made up or fabricated. The Bento Box review is the first. We don't know what position they had, they said that there was bad treatment, inflexible hours, no work for hire, disorganization, and bad supervisors. They worked from 2020 to 2023, they said, a chaotic mixed bag of experiences over many different projects and years. Some being so nightmarishly bad, I don't understand how the company could still function to being okay. Don't work here unless you get a senior position. If you're a junior in any aspect, prepare to have most things trickle down into your lap, to have your position constantly kicked around as being expendable. Don't count on promoting from within either. Not only does management not believe a junior could do a senior job, they don't even know what you do. I've personally seen people give 150% to this company only for management to squander that talent by giving them punishing workload slash hours at minimum pay or replacing them with a cheaper option. Management seems deeply embedded and have incredibly secure positions, while everyone else feels like they ride a razor's edge of being let go tomorrow. The first Spindle Horse review is a background artist. They wouldn't recommend the studio and said there was low pay, too much work, bad treatment, bad supervisors, and disorganization, unclear due dates, long down times with no clear indication when work is coming, and no consistency in production. They were a work for hire and were paid between $60 and $300 per background. They worked at Spindle from 2020 to 2021. Deeply unprofessional environment, their comments said, tends to hire unexperienced artists new to the industry and takes advantage of their lack of experience. I was permissive of it at the time because I was excited for my first industry job. Clickish, abusive leads, gossip and rumors run rampant and are encouraged. Some staff were encouraged to spy on other indie projects and social groups and even individual staff members. Using loaded language, it had a cult of personality vibe based around the leads. Favoritism was used to turn people against each other and even minor criticisms about the leadership was punished. The leads would reach out to other projects and tell leads on those not to hire you or if you already work there, to fire you. Incredibly poor production management, dates, and goals shifted constantly or weren't even provided sometimes. Asked multiple times over production for art style guides, videos, or advice and was only told people should know just how to do it. HR person is just the friend of the leads. Upon leaving, spreads horrible rumors about ex-staff members, punishes or berates staff members for working on other projects. The second Spindle Horse review is from an animator. Once again, they cited the low pay, too much work, bad supervisors, creatively unfulfilling projects, and disorganization. They were paid $60 per second of animation and worked at Spindle Horse in 2023. Their comment says, I know it is so tempting for people who cannot find work to jump at their first opportunity, but do not do it with this studio. There is a reason they are constantly looking for animators. Unbelievably high expectations for roughs of extremely complex character designs animated on twos. Really poor management and organization. Notes sometimes took forever to get to you. Pay is absurdly low. Pay per second model is inherently abusive, but I say it can be worth it for a struggling artist. If the project is fulfilling in other aspects, it will not be. Please stay away, I cannot stress this enough. I'm sure it's fulfilling for the people who apparently get paid 1000 weekly, but for us by commission artists, it is not worth it at all. To spend the time trying to learn these insanely complex characters for the pay we are receiving, and the hope that maybe in the future, we will be paid what we are worth. So that's a couple of the reviews archived. As for my opinion, I think things would be looking bad for Spindle if these reviews were legitimate. There are however some concerns with the document. The first thing, like I mentioned earlier, is that anyone can create a view in this doc. It would take five minutes to create a convincing review about how Spindle Horse or Bento Box are bad. It'll then be automatically added to the document. I'm not saying every review is fake, but there's definitely a couple that lack info, so they're most likely made up. 
It's also easy for someone to just see what other people have said, and then parrot verbatim what they said. Once people see a couple of reviews that all say the same thing, then it creates a convincing argument. Since the template for the review uses a drop down menu of buzzwords, it means that every review more or less says the same thing. This isn't exactly helpful for pinpointing the exact issues with Spindle Horse and Bento. The best reviews are the ones that contain additional comments that help to elaborate what the person was saying and why they disliked the studio. One artist who was included in the review left a concerned comment. Basically what happened was that this document was shared around legitimate artists and animators for them to give their thoughts. However, for some reason the document was then posted publicly to Twitter for everyone else to see. This ruined the document because firstly, like the artist said, they left a review and were told it would be kept private. It was then revealed later, and as a result the artist is scared they might lose their job because their review could be traced back to them. Similarly, since the document was posted publicly with no verification or proofing system, it's easy for random users to grief the document within a couple of clicks. It's likely that the document had some sort of credibility at the beginning, however once it was shared publicly, that all went out the window. Some other users also pointed out that due to the nature of how the reviews work, if you had a negative experience you're more likely to give a review compared to if you had a good experience. There were a couple of good reviews of Spinal Horse, however the sheer amount of negative reviews means the people having a positive thing to say were pushed to the side. I've seen people say that Vivzi or Spinal should respond to this, personally I think there's no point. Some of the reviews look verbatim copy and pasted from one another, it should be common sense that you shouldn't trust what you read unless there's proof. I'm not sure why people were taking this bro trust me stuff at face value and trying to say Spinal Horse is finished and has been in hell of our doomed. If you have any thoughts on the situation, I'd love for you to leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.